Good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight we are going to celebrate this uh, Holy Mass. And uh, at an earlier time, our bishop blessed uh, the three oils that we use for our ministry uh, to those who are sick, and as well the oil that we use for baptism and confirmation. And so at this time, we will now process with these holy oils. Oil of the sick. God of healing, God of hope, God of freedom and of peace, with compassion make us whole and heal us body, mind, and soul. You have blessed this all we bring. Now anoint us with. 
oil of catechumens. God of wisdom, God of love, God of victory and strength, protect all who believe and bless your church with unity. You have blessed this all we bring. Now anoint us with your love. Oil of wisdom, oil of love, oil of victory and strength. One together we become anointed. Holy Chrism, God of gladness, God of joy, God of holiness and light, give your gifts, O Spirit, come to every place and everyone. You have blessed this all we bring, now anoint us with. Thursday. And as we always do, we begin with the sign of our faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And as we are now here gathered for the celebration of this Mass, commemorating the first time that our Lord Jesus Christ has given to us the gift of the Holy Eucharist, we ask for his love and mercy for those times when perhaps. You know, we have not truly considered this wonderful gift, the gift that keeps on giving, that we have not honored it sometimes, you know, during those uh, Sundays and uh, days of obligation. We ask now for his love and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have great sin in my thoughts and in my words and what I have Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Mother of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Let us pray. Lord our God, you have called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son, when he was about to hand himself over to death, 
entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. May you grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And so now we give glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God, and on earth is the people of the world. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, 
I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I, the Lord, but the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with the pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, 
This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, you Lord. O Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon, the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, and dried them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you might remember uh, this uh, beloved Eucharistic hymn that we have in our church. 
And so if you know this, just follow along. You know, I will just sing uh, one verse of it. We remember how you loved us to your death. And still we celebrate that you are with us here. And we believe that we will see you when you come in your glory, Lord. We remember, we celebrate, we believe. And so, my dear friends, uh, this evening, remembrance, you know, we remember. Remembrance is at the very heart of this very celebration of Holy Thursday. For thousands and thousands of years, Christians around the world have been remembering and, of course, celebrating this great Passover feast of our Lord. For thousands of years, Christ's disciples, you know, past and present, have been gathering around this altar table. And we repeat Paul's remembrance as Corey uh, proclaimed it to us in our second reading this evening. So we remember that Jesus mandated us you know, to gather, to repeat the very words that he uttered that evening. Take this, all of you, he said. This is my body. This is my blood. Eat it. Drink it in memory of me, in remembrance of me. And so untold generations of Christians had been celebrating the Holy Eucharist in remembrance of Him. And we have been receiving this nourishment of His most precious body and blood in the Holy Eucharist. And we do that in remembrance of Him. And so that's why, my dear friends, it pains me so much that so many members of our faith community you know, members of the mystical body of Christ, so many of you, our parishioners, are not able to take part, you know, in our celebration tonight, you know. This is really painful, you know, for me especially as your pastor. And I can even begin to imagine how difficult it must have been for you. I know I've been receiving text messages and, and letters and, and um, email, you know, how, how you have this hunger now. You know, because it's almost a month already that we are like in voluntary fasting, you know, from, from the Holy Eucharist. You know, this deadly pandemic really is like a dark cloud that is hovering above us all. And it's totally changing our way of life. But as well, it's changing totally, even our faith life. Tonight's celebration would have been a lot more elaborate. You know, um, like after this homily, for example, we would have the washing of the feet. And of course, we couldn't do that, you know, because of this social distancing, you know, that we have to abide by. And uh, later on, we won't even have the procession to a chapel of repose. We won't have a chapel of repose this year. Um, again, you know, because of this pandemic that is upon us. So it is changing a lot of things for us. And, and, uh, and it's very difficult, you know, uh, especially the whole idea of celebrating uh, this Holy Thursday with just a handful of you present. But, my dear friends, the Holy Eucharist is not the only thing uh, that Jesus gave us on that blessed night. Because along with the gift of the blessed Eucharist, He also gave us what we call in Latin the mandatum. You know, The mandatum or the mandate is to wash one's, one another's feet. And like I said, you know, uh, in better times, you know, we would have been washing feet, you know, after this homily as an expression uh, of our uh, obedience to the new commandment that Jesus is giving us. Love one another, he said, as I have loved you. Um, and so, my dear friends, let, let's talk about this, um, because, you know, perhaps you have been wondering, you know, over the years, maybe you did not articulate it per se, but perhaps you were wondering, why did Jesus decide, you know, to do foot washing as an expression of his love for his disciples? I mean, he could have said, you know, he could just look at the, the 12 and say, you know, guys, I love you, you know, really, you know, from the bottom of my heart, 
I love you very much. And if I were one of the disciples, of course, I would take that, you know, coming from the mouth of our Lord, how wonderful. If I would hear that, you know, as one of his disciples, I would take that. Um, and he could have given them a hug as well, you know, an embrace. But he did not do that as well. Maybe a pat in the back, he did not do that. But instead, he went down on his knees and he washed their feet. Now, why is this important? Why, 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 why am I focusing on this now? I would like to put this into proper perspective with you. During our Lord's time, and in fact, even in our own time, people's feet are probably the, the hardest working part of a person's body. Now, back in our Lord's time, you know, they, they did not have the luxury of having public transportation, you know, unless you're royalty or nobility or a soldier. And so regular folks, you know, they just walk all over the place. They walk everywhere. Sometimes they would walk for days and days just to get from point A to point B. And then also, there were not a lot of paved roads back in those days. You know, dirt roads was what they had, rocky, dusty roads. Another thing, footwear. Footwear was a luxury in those days. For the most part, you know, if you have a little bit of money, maybe you can afford to buy leather sandals. But we can safely presume that many of them just went barefoot. So we're talking about folks with very dusty, very dirty, and dare I say it, perhaps even smelly feet. Many of them probably had calluses, you know, bunions or <laughs> fungus, you know, <laughs> toe jams. <laughs> and so I'm thinking Jesus could have, you know, chosen to do something else, you know, wash their hands, give them a hug, say, I love you. But like I said, he did not do any of those things. He went down on his knees and was their feet, you know. And that was a very radical gesture, if you would. You know, our feet are the base of our bodies, right? Our feet are the very foundation of our bodies. The, our feet make us steady and sturdy. So the act of washing his disciples' feet, my dear friends, we have to understand this, it was not an act of debasement, you know, like, like Jesus making himself, you know, very low, like a servant. It was, in fact, an act of sanctifying, you know, the very foundation of a person. And so to wash clean and to sanctify their feet is a way of preparing them for the mission that he was going to give them, you know, a mission that will be entrusted to them, because it was a mission of love. You see, our feet give, give us mobility. Our feet give us independence and power, you know. So for us, the independence that our feet give us, in turn would give us the freedom to follow Jesus. For us, the mobility that our feet afford us, in turn, give us the ability to go, to go forth as evangelizers. And as well for us, the power that comes from being able to walk on our feet, empowers us to become unbounded and unrestricted so that we may fulfill the mission that comes with our baptism uh, so that we truly may be a Christian, you know, not just in word, but in deed. Now let's turn to Peter. You know, uh, wh why was Peter so put off? You know, why was Peter so repelled by the whole idea of his feet being washed? We could almost hear him, you know, in that proclamation of the gospel, no way, Lord, no way, Jesus, I, I won't let you wash my feet. I won't, you know. And, of course, you know, we're not exactly sure why, you know, uh, why Peter was so vehemently against having his feet washed. But we can make an educated guess. And this is our guess. Perhaps Peter's toes were ugly because of bunions and calluses, you know. But Jesus insisted on 
washing his feet anyway. He did not care. Yeah. Because it is precisely, precisely those parts of us that we are hiding. It is precisely those aspects of our personality that's not very nice. Things in our lives that we are not very proud of, those are exactly the things that our Lord would go for, so that He may clean and sanctify us. But why? You know, why? By cleansing our feet, the very foundation of our bodies, Jesus would then be able to truly prepare us for the Christian work ahead of us. Because there's so much, you know, there's really so much that our Lord would want us to do in following Him. And he needed to prepare us, and to prepare us, he goes for the very foundation of our being, our feet. Um, that's why he insisted to Peter, you know, when Peter said, No, Lord, no way, you won't wash my feet at all. And this is what our Lord said, Unless I wash your feet, you will have no inheritance with me. You know, what does that mean? You will have no inheritance with me. It means... My dear friends, that if we will not allow our Lord to cleanse us and to sanctify us, then Jesus would not have anything to do with us, you know, no inheritance with him. And why was it so important for Jesus to wash their feet and our feet, if you would? Because he was also giving us, you know, an example of what it means to be of humble service to others. Because nothing is more humbling than going down on your feet and washing somebody else's feet. You know, that's not something we would do. But of course, all of this is symbolic of the fact that, you know, for us, our service uh, should not be discriminatory. You know, our ability to give, our ability to help, our ability to, to do good things for people, you know, uh, we should not discriminate at all. Charity like uh, the charity of our Lord, is for everyone. Now, um, elsewhere in the Gospels, of course, you know, Jesus would repeat this theme as well. You know, what did he say at one time? He said, I came to serve and not to be served. So that's our model to follow. So as our Lord saw himself as somebody who would get down on his knees, and so he's calling on us as well to do that. When we receive him, in the Holy Eucharist, my dear friends, when he re we receive his body and his blood. The whole idea of that really is so that he may be in us, so that we may incarnate him, so that he would become a part of our flesh and our blood, so that he may be us, so that he may be in us, is what I mean. And so tonight, my dear friends, if we haven't already done so in our lives, you know, we truly are called to dedicate ourselves in humble, humble service to all. Like I said, we don't discriminate when it comes to our ability to extend charity to everyone. That's what our Lord did, and that's for us to follow. Uh, it can be a challenge, you know, for some of us, and so that's why we need to ask our Lord's grace, you know, so that we may be able to do what He wanted us to do, to even get on our knees. Uh, in remembrance of him, but also to follow the very example that he set up for us. Please rise. And together we profess our faith. I believe. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, we trust in God's kindness and divine mercy. And now we go to Him and we bring our prayers. Your response is, Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For Pope Francis, our Bishop Stephen, our Pastor Father Edmundo, and all the clergy, may they be mindful of Christ's call to servant leadership, eager to continue in humble service to the church, we pray. Lord, hear us. For those entrusted with elected offices, may they seek common ground, working across divides to bring about the common good. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear us. For those who are struggling financially, trying to make ends meet for themselves and their families, may they find opportunities for work and other ways to alleviate their difficulties. We pray, Lord, Lord hear us. us, for nurses, doctors, and other healthcare professionals who care for us and our loved ones. We pray, Lord, Lord hear us, for those from this parish community who have died and no longer gather around the table with us physically. May we be reminded of their faith and dedication, especially during these days of Holy Week. We pray. Lord, hear us. <clears throat> and for those who are preparing to be fully received into our church, that these final days of preparation bring them reassurance and an abundance of hope for the future, we pray especially for members of our faith community for early uh, we pray for Shirley, we pray for Max and Joss, and for Michael, and for Tay, and uh, for Nathan as well, that our Lord may continue to journey with you in your faith lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. And in this time of pandemic, my dear friends, let's remember all of those who, who passed away uh, because of this contagion. We pray for our Lord to be merciful upon them. We pray as well for their loved ones whom they have left behind and are now um, you know, mourning uh, their loss. Uh, we pray for those who are ill, who are struggling in, in our hospitals, not just in our country but around the world, uh, that our Lord may send His healing gifts upon them. And for all of us who are still healthy, uh, we ask that our Lord may continue, you know, to cover us with His divine protection. And my dear friends, we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
And so, my dear friends, if you would please pray with me now that this, my offering and yours, be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the, May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. May you grant, Almighty God, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, and without end, together we acclaim. Merciful Father, we make our humble prayer and our petition through Christ, your Son and our Lord, that you may accept and that you may bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. May you be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, especially for your divine mercy and protection, Lord, as we are now immersed in this pandemic. And so together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Stephen, our Bishop, Deacons Patrick and Blue uh, in our parish community, and all of those who, holding to the divine truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, our brothers and sisters, those who already perish because of this COVID-19. Remember your sons and your daughters whom you have gathered here today before you, whose faith and devotion are known to you alone. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls. In hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious, ever-Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Mother of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Mother, together with her blessed spouse, Joseph, together with St. Paul, our patron, and all the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Andrew, James, John, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints, 
We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your divine and protective help. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray that you may graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and his blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your blessed peace, O Lord, and may you command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and be counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and the blood of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith. May they rest in the sleep of peace. May you grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all those who sleep in Christ a, please, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, although we are sinners, we hope in your abundant mercies graciously grant some share in the fellowship of your holy apostles and martyrs. And so in a similar way now, Heavenly Father, when supper was ended, he took the chalice in his precious hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And he gave you the chalice of his disciples, saying, Take this whole of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And so, God, our Father, may you be pleased to look upon this, our offerings, with your serene and kindly countenance. May you accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, that you may command that this Eucharistic gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your holy altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through our participation at this altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may we be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, God our Father, our brothers and sisters who have gone before us with the sign of faith, may they rest in the sleep of peace. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them. We ask you to fill them with life. May you bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
friends, if you would please rise now. And together we pray that prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from every evil. May you graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your divine mercy, may we always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await that blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not upon our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously may you grant her peace and unity in accordance with your holy will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. You can find it. Oh, okay. <laughs> So behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to receive him. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Oh, yeah. 
Let us pray. May you grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And so just a brief announcement here. So this is our first uh, live streaming uh, of, of the Mass. We will continue this, of course, tomorrow, uh, again at 6 o'clock in the afternoon. So uh, if you experience you know, any, any uh, issues when you were trying to connect you know, with our live streaming, if there were some problems, uh, if you would please you know, uh, call, uh, leave your message in the office, and we will try and address that. You know, hopefully, uh, it went without a hits. But this being our first time, you know, I, uh, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, and so once again, my dear friends, this is just the first of the three days, right? The triduum, uh, uh, they are one celebration spread out in three days. So we just completed our Holy Thursday. So tomorrow will be Good Friday, a continuation. And then we will conclude with the Easter Vigil on Saturday at 6 p.m. And so please continue to, you know, um, to, um, to watch uh, from your homes. Uh, one announcement, by the way, for tomorrow, in case I forget about it. Uh, when you once again tune in to our live streaming, please make sure that uh, you have a crucifix handy uh, when you are watching uh, the, the Good Friday celebration. Uh, so that when we get to the veneration of the cross part, then you will have a crucifix that you can venerate, your very own, uh, in your own homes. So um, be, be safe out there, be careful, and we will be seeing you tomorrow. God bless.